What just happened, Marvel? Is this poster for real? Hello everyone, it's Martin Perhiniak from Yes, I'm a Designer. I decided to dedicate a video on the topic of this controversial poster of Spider-Man Homecoming. I'm talking about the poster on the left, and I collected a couple of references that I would like to compare it to. My aim is to find out why people don't like it, and whether it can be improved to make it work. So just a few of the Twitter comments that were hilarious, from Leon Hurley, I love the new Spider-Man trailer, but what the hell is this poster? Did someone win a competition on Reddit? Or Kyle Buchanan, who actually did this rework that you see in the middle, he said, I'll be honest, I tried to improve the very busy Spider-Man Homecoming poster, and I no longer know where the original ends and mine begins. And also another brilliant one from Caleb D. Thompson, he said, I don't think they got their point across well enough with the new Spider-Man poster, so I made a few changes. So let's try to find what went wrong. Coming back to an alternative poster, which was released earlier on, this obviously, the new one on the left, is too busy. It has just too much going on. But we also had other versions, like this one, or this, and all of these are very simplistic and unique and witty at the same time. Like here, we can see obviously the location, which relates to homecoming, but also on the signboard, we can see the shadow of the villain. Very smart composition. There was also another poster released at the same time of the one on the left, and this version actually has two very important elements from the one on the left. Iron Man and the villain are exactly in the same pose on both of these posters. So my thinking is that the one in the middle, which works really well as a composition, it's very epic and the effects are good, that was the one that was created originally. And then the marketing team got involved, and they wanted to show all the characters, and especially Tony Stark, because he is the big selling point at Marvel. So the poor designer who had to create the version on the left needed to fit a lot of things in, and that probably was one of the major factors in it becoming a mess. So don't get me wrong, I don't want to blame the designer, or even the team. I'm more interested about finding the reason why the general public don't like this poster. Design and art in general is very subjective, and I believe in constructive criticism, so I'm not trying to be negative, just simply intrigued what caused the general response to be so negative. So you might say that, yes, there's a lot of characters and that is impossible to fit on the poster, but that's wrong, because if you look at Guardians of the Galaxy, a recent poster, there we have loads of characters, probably much more than what we have on the left, and it still works beautifully. The reason for that is mainly because there's a very smart composition, forming a circle and a star within that, plus here the highly saturated crazy color theme works much better than on the one on the left, where we have these blue tones, then we have the reds, and then even have purples and yellows. It's just all over the place, and not cohesive or consistent, as the one with the Guardians of the Galaxy. Now here's another example where the color theme is again very different, it's more desaturated, almost monochromatic, and once again we have quite a lot of characters, maybe not as much as on the left side, but again it works really nicely. Apart from the colors, another important thing that we can see is working on the right, is the scaling of the portraits, where there is a really well thought out hierarchy. The villain being the biggest, then Captain Sparrow's portrait in the middle being the second, and then we move down in the importance following the scaling. Also another thing that makes this work really well is that we have a general shape that all of these portraits form together as a whole, which sometimes in graphic design we call container or holding device. And that is something that a few recent posters also used even more visibly, like this one, from Valerian, where the V is the obvious holding device, and again we have loads of characters in one, but still it is cohesive, it is interesting, and again has a nice color theme. But even Power Rangers did it really well, once again with the holding device, 
and the smart use of negative space. In design, the empty space is just as important as the actual detail that is visible. So if a poster doesn't use enough negative space, it will look cluttered. And that's again something that we can see on the example on the left. So here's another Marvel poster, which is a few years old, but I thought I'm going to include this because it's quite similar in the sense that it has a lot of characters on the picture, but still it works better because of a few reasons. It has the two central characters clearly separated from the background because they are in focus, they are completely visible. And then as we move back, all the characters are slightly faded until we get to some characters that are almost transparent, fading into the background. So we have a sense of depth. And that is again something we are lacking with the Spider-Man poster. Here's another great example showing loads of characters, but again in an amazing composition with a lot of movement and exciting perspective. And by the way, perspective, that's also something that's a bit messed up with the Spider-Man poster, where most of the characters are standing straight in a static pose, but then we have a big Iron Man zooming out towards us, and also we have the villain coming down from the sky using a completely different perspective. And remember, we saw these exact same images in the other alternative Spider-Man poster where the perspective was perfect. But once they are removed from that and placed into a different setting, not paying attention to perspective will make them look weak and out of place. I was intrigued to find out whether this composition can be improved with some changes without completely changing the whole composition. So I spent half an hour in Photoshop messing around, moving certain parts around, replacing some things, and also using two elements from the trailer. I'm not saying the end result is better than the original one. This is more of an experiment. And while we are looking at this time-lapse version, let's try to summarize what went wrong. Number one, color theme not working or we can even say a lack of color theme. Being very vibrant and colorful works if it's thought out and using each of the colors at a perfect amount. Here with this poster, unfortunately, that's not the case. And the simple test, what I'm doing also, is that simply just by turning black and white already looks better. Number two, lack of cohesive perspective. I already explained why that is a problem. But in a nutshell, when you don't have perspective in your designs or it's faked and it's not working, it will make things look botched together and will generally feel amateur. Number three, lack of negative space. Crowding a lot of characters into a poster is not the problem, but leaving no breathing space around them is. Similarly to balancing details on the left and on the right side of the poster, it's also a balancing act to find how much negative and positive space you will use. And number four is about proportions. So this is about the scaling of each of these characters present in the poster. Where in the design we had Tony Stark really big on the top right corner. And then we also had him zooming out of the picture in the middle in his Iron Man armor. That it almost makes us doubt whether this is a Spider-Man movie. So the scaling of each character or even just simply fading them out would help to establish the right hierarchy that's relevant to the story. So the version I ended up with is really toned down in colors compared to the original on the left. And I would actually add one point to that list that we went through. The original poster was also lacking a focal point. I over exaggerated it on mine, but you can clearly tell that now because I have that white bright light under the chin of Spider-Man, that is obviously going to draw everyone's attention straight in to that point, And that is my clear focal point. While on the original one, it is hard to decide where really the focal point is. Is it Iron Man? Is it the purple light coming out of that weapon on the right? Is it Tony Stark on the top right? Or is it Spider-Man? You can't really tell because it's not clear. 
So apart from that, I went to a dual tone, more graphic look, but mainly because I think that was the original aim with the composition. They wanted it to look like an illustrated poster, but then they ended up using photographs and again, it was just not a good idea. So I hope you found this useful and I would love to hear your comments about what went wrong, what you think of my take on it and how would you redesign the poster. Thanks a lot for watching and see you guys next time. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on Facebook, Twitter and Google+. Also, if you want to learn more about design, check out my in-depth online courses on my site, yesimadesigner.com.